everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another Pi game with Pi OpenGL and Python tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be building on the last video uh, where we actually made our, our little cube here. And, uh, you know, it looks awesome. It's rotating, sweet. Um, but now we want to, like, learn a little bit more about, you know, what went into making this cube, how we can modify it, and what we can do later on with those modifications. So, let's close out of this and let's return back to this epic paint window. Very glad I didn't close this because I'm going to use it again and again. Um, although this might be the last time. But, but this time, uh, what we want to address is the actual surface. So the surface is, um, you know, this, right? Uh, so let's make a, let's say, you know, you've got uh, nodes. So we've got node one, two, three, four, five, wow, five, six, seven, and node eight. Okay, and then you have this, the actual surfaces here. So let's say this front surface is the one in question. Um, so we fill it in and we lose node three. <laughs> But this surface, let's say we'd want to address that surface. Um, that's the surface between five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and then we do the same thing um, with the other one. Like let's say this surface, we want to address this one. Well, we could fill this one in as well. But it's between one, two, five, six. This one would be six, eight, four, two, and so on. So that's what we want to talk about. And then we're also going to talk about some of these functions that we covered in the last video. Um, so like I said. Sometimes if you're having a hard time visualizing how these things work, the best thing to do, if, if you're one of those people, like a, a real visual hands-on type of learner, is to let it pop up on the screen, make a couple adjustments, re-pop it up, see what the difference is, and you'll, you'll get a better feel for, for uh, how things work. So the first thing I want us to go ahead and do is let's make another list. And uh, this will be the final list for us. And this list is going to be surfaces. And this is going to be a list, again, or a tuple of tuples, yet again, of all of the surfaces. So how many surfaces are there? Well, we've got this top one. So we've got the sides. Let's say one, two, three, four, you know, around the sides. And then front and back would be five and six. So we've got six total uh, surfaces. So let's go ahead and copy and paste. Two, three, four, five, and six. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's make cubes. No. Uh, so now we're going to connect between all of the nodes. So obviously, uh, like we were saying over here, uh, you know, you've got one, two, three, and four. Those are all, you know, a, that's a, a face, so to speak, right? Like this right here is a face. So we're going to fill in that. I really thought I had, uh, okay, anyway. Uh, so one, two, three, four is actually node zero, one, two, three. I should have done that in my example, I'm sorry one two and three and then the next one let's say uh here you know well the are my nodes here are not identical so never mind don't use that image anymore <laughs> but we're going to make the connection between three two seven and six that's a surface and then we've got six seven uh five and four then we've got four five one and zero and then we have a one five seven to two and then we're going to have a four to zero to three and six and those are all of our surfaces so then what do we do when we want to uh, write some gl code that's right audience we have to encase it in gl begin and gl end so we do the same thing that we did here um, because this time it's not lines right we're not drawing lines anymore so this is not uh, pertaining to what we're about to do so we're gonna have to define some new ones so again, GL begin, we'll just leave it params for now. GL end, so begin and end that stuff. What are we doing this time? We're doing GL quads, baby. So that's our uh, GL constant right there. And then now uh, we're gonna say this time for surface in surfaces, uh, what do we wanna do? So that's for each of these in the surfaces and all these numbers, right, correspond to the node or the vertex uh, or each of the vertices. <laughs> and uh, so for surface and surfaces, um, normally we would do something here. I guess we'll just, we'll throw in the color. Like you could do GL color 3FV, and then you throw in a color here. So, and these are basically zero minimum, one is maximum. So like, for example, this would make green. Um, not positive, but let's go ahead and run this, see what happens. 
Right. Um, so we still have a, a, one more thing we need to do uh, because we have not uh, finished. So let's go ahead and close this. And so we've done we've done this. And then what we need to do next is call uh, for vertex in uh, surface surface uh, gl vertex 3fv. And then again here we just do vertices uh, vertex. And this code, I mean, this this will work in theory, or it should, right? So now we have a cube. Um, it may be, you know, as it moves, we can see it's clearly a cube, but we're kind of maybe having a hard time recognizing that it's a cube. Um, but let me close out of this real quick and just specify something too. So we could take this here, we could cut and paste like that, and you see it's like the exact same thing. But then also. Um, what if we were to take this and put it like right here? Okay, so you see how it's making like no change at all. So what, where we put it, how does it matter? So if we put it here, um, this basically sets like the constant color period for this GL block that we're doing. If we put it here, under four surface and surfaces, it literally is four surface and surfaces. And then same thing here. But if it's the same color, then it's just, it's not gonna make any difference where we slap this. But let's go ahead and make a quick colors list here. Colors equals, and then let's go ahead uh, and make a few colors, shall we? I really should have copied and pasted it, but that's okay. This will do for now. We'll just make some of these colors. So, so let's do uh, one, zero, 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 one, zero, um, zero, zero, one, uh, zero, 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 one, 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 and then zero, one, one. Okay, those are our colors. We have six colors. Let's go ahead and just uh, we'll just copy this once and paste. You'll see why in a minute, but we'll do that since the max thing we have is 12. Um, so now we've got 12 different colors. Now we can do uh, like this. Um, we'll just say x equals zero. Um, x plus equals one, let's say. And uh, for surface and surfaces, then we'll say the color here is colors x. Let's see if we get away with this. Uh, yeah, okay. So you can see that now we've like colored some of the edges. Um, but we're still not totally uh, happy yet. Um, the next thing I want to show, let's take, uh, we need to, let's change this to a one and like this to a one. Let me try this one. Let me try this thing. Uh, I didn't really change anything major. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, let me close out of this and close out of this. Uh, so, so that gave us like whole face colors, but what if we did like something like this? Like, um, I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna get away with this. I guess we could take this, do this, and then do take this, and then do this. Let's see if we get away with that. Right. So in this scenario. <laughs> Uh, we've changed the game a little bit because what we're doing is instead of for each surface, we're saying for each vertice. And you see we get this lovely multicolor, just absolute fun stuff. So anyway, fun to play with that. We'll, we'll, um, we can leave that for now. Uh, so now, uh, the other things I just wanted to run through really quick, sorry to take up all your time, but let's like comment this out for now. Um, the GL rotate, let's go ahead and save and run that real quick. Right, so now we've got a back to being stationary. And now what we want to do is, this is the translate. Uh, if you recall, this is X, Y, and Z. So this translate, for example, that is like our relation to the object. So if we make this five, let's run this. Apparently too much. Let's make it one. There we go. So we've shifted over uh, the x value by one um, unit. Uh, we can do the same thing to y. Let's shift y by one. 
and now it's up a bit. So we've shifted our perspective there as well. Um, conversely, we could do something like this, like 0 0.5. Okay, so now it's clear, it's not as much up as noticed here. Um, the other thing that we can do, obviously we have rotate, that's by uh, degrees, and then you've got x, y, let's say two here. So now you see we've kind of like rotated up a little bit um, on the cube. Um, and then let's le return this back to zero, zero. Uh, perspective, the clipping, uh, I have to show you guys the clipping one. I think I'll save that for the next video. The next video will be much more exciting than this video. <laughs> I promise. Um, although colors is, is indeed very fun. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think we'll have to wait, uh, wait until the next video, but I will just say, if you're a little confused about vertices and edges, you can always do stuff like this, right? So vertices, negative one. Oh, in fact, you know what? Let's go ahead and put this back to like 25, 2, and 1. Um, let's save and run that really quick. Sorry, let's see where we are now. OK, uh, and let's get rid of this displacement that we've added here. So let's put that back to uh, 0 and 0. Good enough. Um, so now what we want to do, uh, what I, the last thing I really wanted to show uh, in this one what was it? I don't remember what it was now. I like blanked out for you guys. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Edit the vertices. Okay, so you remember what that one looked like? Now let's do negative two for this one. So we've moved that node. Um, see how I like messed this up a little bit? Uh, another thing that we could do, for example, is we could change that, but now, now it's like misorder the vertices. So we'll cut this one, put it down here, and then we'll cut this one, put it here, and then let's cut this one and put it here. And this is why vertice order matters. So we'll save and run that. Uh oh. What? Oh, okay. This one doesn't have a comma after it, so let's add that comma. Right. So now you've got this like jumbled up cube. So that's why it's important that you specify the order correctly uh, to PyOpenGL. Now that is also why people many times have functions that create the object for them. Um, specifically for that reason, so you do, they don't mess it up, right? Because because um, if you have a function that does it, you basically say that where you want it maybe or the starting point, and then and that's it, right? You're not going to have any trouble um, with like user error so much. You just need to write the function one time, and you never have to do it uh, and do that again and like visualize it again. But for someone who's trying to learn OpenGL and like Pi OpenGL, for example. That's really confusing, trying to figure out what the heck that function even does, you know. So anyway, um, hopefully that's of use to you guys. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to be talking about is getting user input to change. So right now, this is all automatic, but how could we actually get user input to change, um, you know, our perspective on this live, um, besides just having it rotate for us. So I'll show you guys how you can zoom in and out, and maybe how we could go like left, right, or up and down, that kind of stuff. Um, so it'll be a, a good fun. So stay tuned for that, and uh, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.